Okay, so be gradient. So let's just make a couple of notes. Very important notes that you can write down as well to, to do gradient. Gradient determine the steepness of a slope. And to be exceedness in meters. Now, once again, altitude is by trick stations. Remember, little triangle, there's a bold italic number on the top. That's the trick station number. The actual height is the bottom right hand side corner. We have benchmarks that we usually find next to roads, spot heights, and lastly, we have contour lines. Okay. Now, what do you? All four of these have in common. All four of them are being expressed in meters. Okay, very important. Now, when we come to the calculation of gradient, once again, there's a formula involved, and the formula states the following. Gradient equals VI over H E. Okay, VI stands for vertical interval and the H E stands for horizontal equivalent. Okay, so that's the formula. Now I'm going to tell you something, I'm going to tell you a secret while I tell my learners. It's just so much to you. Identify. Vertical interval is the height difference. Okay, I'll wait in a couple of minutes, seconds. Horizontal equivalent is the distance, the average distance between the two places where you need to go and calculate the gradient. So the question is going to state you need to go and calculate the gradient between either a tree station or a benchmark or between a spot height or contour line. So you need to go and determine. Between, let's say for instance, we have a contour line on the left-hand side, a spot height on the right-hand side. So we need to determine, is the gradient going to be steeper or gentle in meters? Is it going to increase or decrease? Okay. So we need to stick to our formula. Gradient equals vertical interval over horizontal equivalent. But I'm going to just put you in bracket. Easier way to remember. I'm just going to say HD. H is for height difference. And the HE, the distance. Tip that I can give you, especially with the distance. Now, what we've looked in last week's episode and a little bit earlier, on a 1 to 10,000 map, and a 1 to 4, my question to you is what formula is to go and calculate meters? Now, remember, they are different because they have different scales. Now, when we want to go and calculate distance in meters in our autophoto map, what are we going to use? We're going to use the formula 100. Now, if we want to go and calculate the distance on a 1 to 50,000 map, a topographical map, what are we going to use? We're going to use the formula of what? 100. Because when are we going to use this formula? We need to go and calculate the distance between the two areas. Okay. So I'm going to do two examples. I'm going to do one on a 1 to 10,000 autophoto and one on topographical map. Because I, the biggest mistakes, great false, don't pay attention the map that we use to do the question. Okay. Some of you can do the gradient calculation beautifully, but the problem is you're using the different formula, you're using the incorrect formula for the correct map, for the map. Now let's assume, once again, I'm going to bring up my beautiful drawing of a map. Let's assume 
This is a 1 to 10,000 scale. So immediately, what do we know? This is an autophoto, am I correct? Okay. And I'm going to ask you to calculate the gradient from spot height 1,400 all the way to trich beacon number 9, and the height is 670. Okay. Let me just quickly wipe this off and write the question down here. So the question states, calculate the gradient from spot height 1400 to trick beacon number 9. Okay. Now immediately, first thing you need to go and pay attention to, you need to go and pay attention to where was this question asked, on which map did they ask the question, because they're going to provide you with the grid A10 to go and find the spot site or the benchmark, right? So you need to go and determine, is it on the autophoto or is it on the topographical map? In this case, I'm using the scale 1 to 10,000 to show you it is on the autophoto. Now let's just go back to our formula and go do this calculation. First of all, there's two sets of information. The gradient equals the vertical interval, the height difference, over the horizontal equivalent. Now how do one get the height difference between two points? How do we determine the difference? Now I'm going to give you a simple example. I've got 10 apples, you've got 5 apples. What's the difference? 5, am I correct? You've got 9 apples. I've got 10 apples. What's the difference? One. Remember, we can't go into a minus when we get a difference. Okay. We can only subtract the highest, the lowest from the highest, not vice versa. So what are we going to do over here? Our first step is gradient equals the vertical interval. So what is the high difference? It's one for, we take the highest, 1,400. And we subtract the lowest, tree station 9. Now, do you not get confused? The calculate the gradient from spot height 1,400 1, to tree station 9. That 9 represents the tree station number. It's not the actual height. The number is usually on the bottom right-hand side corner. So it's 1,400. What did I just say? What do we do? To get the difference, you subtract the lowest from the highest. So we're going to do 1,400 minus 670. Now what's our second step? Before I'm going to continue, before that's a simple calculation that we find over there. The second calculation is the horizontal equivalent. So you need to go and measure the distance between the two points. So the question states, calculate the gradient from spot height 1,400 to tree station 9. Now what, if we look at our formula, what did I mention over here? The horizontal equivalent basically is the distance. But now this is key, grade 12, extremely key. We're calculating distance. How do we express gradient in meters? So you need to use your formula of meters when you need to do this calculation. Now, if we go there, we cal let's assume we calculate the distance. It's 20 centimeters from spot height 1,400 to trick station 9. Now, because we're dealing with a 1, 1 to 10,000 map, what's going to be our formula? 20 centimeters times the express our answer in meters. Because we're working on a 1 to 10,000 on an autophoto map, what's the formula going to be? 100. Okay. Now let's quickly go and have a look at our calculation. We need our calculator. Just want to move on a little bit here. 1,400 subtracting 670. 
gives me 730. Okay. Now, 20 times 100 equals 2,000. Now, grade 12, many of you make the following mistake. How does gradient work? Now, what did we want to do? But let's go just back to my map. We wanted to go and calculate the gradient from spot height 1,400 all the way to trick beaker 9. So, in theory, what do we try to do? We want to see when we're walking between these two actual height points, is the gradient going to increase or is it going to decrease? But we are using meters as a measurement. So what do we want to do? We want to see how many meters do we have to travel for the gradient to increase by a meter. Okay. How many meters do we need to walk before the gradient increases in altitude with a meter? So what does it mean? We need to get a ratio of one. And how do we get a ratio of one if we look at it? What are we going to do? We're going to say if we want to get a ratio of one, we take our height difference, and we're going to divide it through what to get 1? 750, am I correct? It's simple. If we look at it, if I want to get a ratio of 1 with a million, what do I do with a million? I take 1 million, and I divide it by another million. It's going to give me 1. If I take 5, divide by 5, it's going to give me a ratio of 1. So if you look at we want to see, because we want to see how we calculate gradient with that meter. That's what we do. Now, simple rule of math. I think you've learned it in grade seven. What you do on the top, you do on the bottom. Am I correct? So 730 divided by 700, uh, 730. Now, what we do on the top, we need to do on the bottom. So 730. Now, we just determine our first ratio. 730 divided by 730 gives me 1. Now, for our next calculation, what we do with our distance, because what we do on top, we need to do on the bottom. 2,000 divided by 700, oh, apologies, 2,000 divided by 730 equals 2.7. Now we had a ratio of 1. That's the altitude gradient that we work with. We use meters to determine our height to height, right? So for every, if you look at it, 2,000 divided by 730. So a matter of fact is, for every 2,7 meters we walk, right? From Trick Beaker 9 to spot height 1,400, the gradient is going to increase with a meter. So for every 2.7 meters we moving forward, the gradient is going to increase. Now, if you kind of think of it, it's going to be bloody steep. Am I correct? Because you're walking 1, 2, 3, then you're increasing in altitude with a meter. So that's quite high. Okay. So this is how you answer this question on an autophoto. Now, I just want to show you, we need to be 100% sure. Like I said, you know, I've looked at this question so many times. Many of you can do the question, but you use the wrong formula. Now, before I want to continue, let's just wipe off. I'm going to use a different, I'm just going to use a different one. And I'm going to use a different example. And obviously, I just want to use a different map. So, because pay, grade 12, it's vitally important that you pay attention to the question. Because unfortunately, not, not, not unfortunately, but we're dealing with two maps. And we get separate questions for the separate maps. And you need to be, take, be very careful once you need to read your question, read your instructions, and then answer the questions. But let's just get straight into it. Now, first of all, let's just draw a map. Okay. And let's assume, no, I'm actually not going to use this map. Let's use this map on top. Let's assume we need to go and calculate the gradient on this topographical map. 
Okay. Unfortunately, we can't see because this map is in size, but I'm just going to draw onto this map. And let's assume a spot height that says 2,400. And right here on the bottom of the corner, in the middle, we have 1,000. Now, I ask you to go and calculate from control line 1,000 to... Okay. So immediately, what's been given on the map? One, the spot height is 2,400 meters. The control line is 1,000 meters. You go and calculate the distance by using your ruler, by measuring the distance between the spot height and between the control line. So let's assume we take our ruler and we measure the distance from the spot height in A1, two control lines in C7. And let's, let's say centimeters. Okay. Now let's go back to our formula. Vertical interval over the horizontal equivalent. Just want to wipe this. So, when we look at it, let's just quickly look at our information that was given to us. The gradient. Look at it. What was the one spot height? 2,400. And our was was 1,000. Remember, you just subtract the lowest from go into a minus because we need to determine the height difference. Then the next step, what did we do? We use our ruler to measure the distance from spot height 2,400 to contour line 1,000, and we got 40 centimeters. Now, one thought for me, what did we say? What's our formula? Go? What formula are we going to use? What formula do we use? to get meters, 500, okay? Because we're using the topographical map, we're using 500. Now, let's just quickly clean this up and then get our calculator out, okay? So first of all, 2,400 subtracting 1,000 gives me 1,400. 40 to times by 500 equals 20,000. Now remember, same as the previous question, only difference it was in the autophoto. We need to get a ratio of 1 because we express gradient in meters. So what do we need to do? To get a ratio of 1, we take that number and we divide it through the same number. 1,400 divided by 1,400. And the simple rule of math, what you do on the top, you do on the bottom. Correct. Okay. 1,400 divided by 1,400 gives me 1. 20,000. Divide by 1,400 equals 14,2. So what does it mean, grade 12? For every 14 meters that we travel, let me just go back to this map. For every single 14 meters that we travel between these two keys the gradient increases with a meter okay so if in meters and the gradient goes up by a meter okay do you think it's no i'd rather say it's a gentle gradient okay so hopefully you understand this we need to get it to a ratio right no not hopefully you should understand this right we need to get a ratio of one to determine because we use the unit measurement of meters to determine gradient 